The arrival in Britain of the amazing Mr. Poon Lim. To all intents and purposes, Mr. Poon Lim is a dapper little Chinese one might meet anywhere. He's a 25-year-old merchant seaman who, after his ship had been torpedoed, lived for 133 days on a raft in the South Atlantic. Over four months adrift in mid-ocean. Came to receive the congratulations and admiration of everyone. Could he recount his amazing experience to the press. The incredible story of Poon Lim is not as well known as other survival stories, but Lim's survival story is a truly fascinating and horrifying tale. Poon Lim was born on the island of Hainan in southeastern China on March 8, 1918. In the 1930s, Japan invaded China, and Poon Lim's father believed it would be much safer for him if he left China. So Poon Lim joined the British Merchant Navy as a cabin boy. He was harassed by his officers and experienced racism for being Asian. He had a tough time, along with many other Asians around this time. He had finally had enough in 1937. He left the Navy and moved to Hong Kong. There he learned to be a mechanic. In 1939, war erupted and the British Navy needed men very badly, so they started treating their recruits better, along with foreigners. The Japanese started a full-scale invasion of China in 1937, but Hong Kong was under British rule. It was a part of the British Empire. It was safe for now. In a bombing raid on Shenzhen in 1939, a few stray bombs landed in Hong Kong. This raised tensions. The Japanese continued their invasion, and by 1941, they had their eyes set on Hong Kong. Poon Lim knew an invasion of Hong Kong was imminent, so he weighed his options. He decided he would leave, so he signed up to be a steward on the SS Ben Lomond. The ship was built in the 1920s, specifically from 1920 to 1922. She was 420 feet long. She had a 55-foot beam. Her depth was 36.3 feet and was 6,629 gross registered tons. She was in service for use between Britain and the Far East. And in 1938, she got her final name, Ben Lomond. Poon Lim was a second mess steward for the Ben Line, which was a Scottish shipping company. Most of the crew were Chinese, but all of the officers were British. During the war, she sailed all around the world, but usually in convoys or protected by the Navy. She traveled to Cape Town, Dakar, Sierra Leone, Middlesburg, Cape Verde, Honolulu, the Panama Canal, Nova Scotia, the Suez, Bombay, Karachi, Durban. The Ben Lomond left port in Egypt at Port Said on October 15, 1942. Her final destination was New York, but she would stop at Cape Town and then Paramaribo in South America before the final stop at New York. Poon Lim had carried out his duties as a steward for the past year now after he escaped Hong Kong. And that invasion actually did happen on Christmas Day, 1941. Hong Kong was captured and occupied. During the war, the Ben Lomond had been armed for defense, along with most British ships during the war. Ships usually traveled in convoys, but this time she'd be traveling alone from Cape Town to Paramaribo. She could travel at 12 knots, not very fast if you were trying to escape from a U-boat. German submarines could travel an average of 18 knots on the surface and 6 knots if they were submerged. The German submarine U-172 was on its third patrol, or third sortie, since it was launched July 31st, 1941. It set off on August 19th, 1942 on what would be its longest and most successful sortie. Off the coast of Cape Town, U-172 spotted and fired two torpedoes and hit the British troop ship SS Orcades. 23,456 gross registered tons on October 10th. The ship did not sink. A third torpedo struck the ship. 
The crew, along with gunners and passengers, stayed on board in an attempt to save the wounded ship. The radio operators had abandoned their station. What are you doing? And a petty officer stayed to send a distress call. Another torpedo hit the ship, and then another, and another. She was hit by six torpedoes. This was too much for the ship, and she sank. 45 men died in the attack, and 1,022 were saved. They went into the water, but they were later rescued. On October 31st, the U-172 sunk the Adlington Court. Now back to the Ben Lohman. At this time, all was quiet since they left Cape Town. But all was about to change. U-172 spotted the Ben Lohman. With a speed of 12 knots, the Ben Lohman didn't stand a chance of escaping. At 2.10 p.m., U-172 struck the ship with two torpedoes. This was a devastating hit. She quickly sank in under two minutes. Poon Lim quickly grabbed his life jacket from his cabin and rushed up to his boat station. Poon Lim was washed overboard while two officers and one man were trying to lower the lifeboat. After Poon Lim resurfaced, he spotted some loose wood floating in the ocean and he grabbed on to keep himself afloat. U-172 surfaced and questioned the few survivors that were left floating in the water and then quickly departed. The ship sank at 0.30 degrees north, 38.45 degrees west. Lim was left there just floating in the water. He was there for around two hours when he spotted a wooden raft floating by. No one was on board and he quickly swam over and climbed aboard himself. He spotted another raft nearby carrying five survivors. They ushered him over, but he couldn't make it over. He had no way to propel himself over to the other raft. Eventually, the two rafts drifted apart even further. Poon Lim was now on his own in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. After undergoing one of the most horrific experiences anyone could ever go through, he was stranded. But luck just happened to be on Poon Lim's side that day. The raft that he found was actually stocked with survival items. This is a list of what I was able to find about what was in the raft. 45 liters of drinking water, 6 full boxes of hardtack. Hardtack is a kind of cracker-like biscuit that was made from flour and water. It's very hard and it lasts a very long time. He found 2 pounds of chocolate, 10 cans of pemmican, which is a kind of mixture of dried meat and berries five cans of evaporated milk, one bottle of lime juice, which is used to stave off scurvy. The British Empire always carried either lime or lemon juice to stave off scurvy. It was very painful and was caused by vitamin C deficiency. It made the gums bleed and in extreme cases could even cause death. He found one can of massage oil, which was used for rubbing the legs and the feet. He had two flares, two smoke pots for signaling, and he had one flashlight. All three of these last items could be used in signaling. The fact that he found the raft floating in the ocean was lucky enough, but that it was stocked with all these supplies must have been a sigh of relief in an extremely horrible situation at least. To find all of these items that were so useful in his survival, it could have been a lot worse. Imagine being Poon Lim. Your boat just got torpedoed and sunk in under two minutes. You've only seen five other survivors in the ocean, and you see a raft, and it's stocked with all these items so important for your survival. He must have been at least a little bit relieved in that moment. Someone was looking down on Poon Lim that day. He survived for quite a while with the supplies that were left in the raft, but when they began to run low, he had to improvise a bit. He started by collecting rainwater from the canopy on top of the raft along with his life jacket. When food ran low, Poon Lim started fishing. His flashlight had stopped working, so he opened it up and he found a spring inside of it. He unwound the spring and then he fashioned it into a homemade fishing hook that he could use to catch small fish with. He tied the homemade hook onto a piece of hemp rope and he lowered it into the water. He used small pieces of hardtack as his fishing bait. He had little success with his homemade fishing hook made out of the spring, so he had to try something else. 
Poonlim dug a nail out of the raft and then he bent it into a fish hook. He used it to first catch a small fish and then he'd use that fish as bait to catch a larger one. He had to eat the fish raw, having no means to cook it. The supplies that were on the raft did not include a knife, so he used one of the cans of pemmican and kind of fashioned it into a homemade knife. Anytime a seabird would land on his raft, he took the opportunity to catch it. He'd kill the birds, take the meat, and soak it in salt water. Once it had soaked long enough, he would dry the meat out and turn it into a kind of seagull beef jerky. Mmm, tasty. One day, Poon Lim was fishing. He'd gotten pretty good at this point. He had even started braiding his fishing line together to make it stronger. He was using meat from one of his captured seagulls as bait when a shark grabbed on. He fought with the shark and managed to pull it on board, but it attacked him immediately. He fought back and bashed the shark to death with his water container. He grabbed his makeshift knife that was made from the pemmican can, cut the shark open, found the liver, and drank the blood from it. He was completely out of water at this point and it had not rained in days. He was desperate. He used the blood to quench his thirst. Poon Lim had actually not been completely alone out there on the ocean. He had been spotted by many people. On one occasion, he spotted a ship and started yelling for them to come near. The ship spotted him, but they just kept going. They didn't stop to help Poon Lim. Poon Lim figured it was because he was Asian. He believed that they made a thought he was a stranded Japanese soldier, even though he was speaking perfect English. There had actually been rumors among sailors that German U-boats would set up fake survivors on life rafts just like this scenario, and they would use it to draw in ships so they could easily torpedo the ships. There had been rumors among sailors that German U-boats would set up fake survivors on rafts in order to lure ships closer so that they could easily be torpedoed. One time, Poon Lim spotted a submarine. It had a white and green flag painted on the tower. He shouted for help, begging for them to come over and save him. But the men just laughed, and they shoot him away. A German submarine even spotted him. But... They didn't come to help. Could you imagine? You're stranded in the middle of the ocean. Supplies are running low. You're having to catch fish with a rusty nail, eat it raw, and suck the blood out of shark livers. You're desperate. You see other boats. You see submarines. You see people close enough that you can speak with them. And they just leave you there. Or worse, they laugh at you. His faith in humanity at that point must have been stretched to the limits. Poon Lim also spotted numerous American airplanes flying overhead, and on one occasion, one of them dropped a buoy to mark his location. The plane reported his position to U.S. authorities in Brazil, but unluckily for him, a bad storm came in and pushed Poon Lim away from the buoy. He was lost again. Poon Lim had lost his pants in the submarine attack, so he had to improvise clothing. He had found a bag on board the raft, and he used that to make a skirt. The only clothes he had that were his own were his shirt and a vest. To keep track of time, he started counting the full moon cycles. It had been months now since his ship had been torpedoed and sunk. He had his hopes broken so many times now. He could have been rescued multiple times. He had drifted now for hundreds and hundreds of miles, and he noticed the color of the ocean was changing. He knew he was getting closer to shore. Instead of a deep, dark blue, the color was now much lighter. His hopes began to rise once again, just hoping that he could make it to shore. He had drifted 750 miles by April 5th, 1942. That day, three fishermen from Brazil were on their family boat around nine miles offshore. They spotted something small off in the distance, so they went closer to investigate. They could see that it was a wooden raft with a very thin and frail man jumping up and down and excitedly begging for help. And he was swinging his shirt over his head in circles. He obviously needed help, so the three men pulled their ship up to the side of his raft. 
and they helped Poon Lim on board. He was desperately weak at this point and couldn't climb on by himself. Poon Lim had finally been rescued after 133 days stranded at sea. The three men only spoke Portuguese, so he couldn't even tell him his story. He was just grateful to be rescued and to accept any food that they could give him because he was starving. He had lost 20 pounds in the past 133 days, and he was a thin man to begin with. It took three days for the men to reach Brazil in the city of Belém. When they got there, he could finally tell his incredible survival story. He had to stay in the hospital for two weeks to recuperate. The British consul sent a telegraph to the Ministry of War Transport asking for confirmation if the Ben Lomond had sunk. After he was released from the hospital, the British consul sent him to New York and then to Britain. He had become an instant celebrity. When he reached Britain, he was awarded the British Empire Medal by King George VI. It was said, Poon Lim displayed exceptional courage, fortitude, and resource in overcoming the tremendous difficulties with which he faced during the long and dangerous voyage on the raft. After the war, he wanted to immigrate to the United States, but the U.S. would only allow a limited number of Chinese into the country every year, and that limit had already been reached that year. But luckily, his fame and his relationship with the U.S. Senator allowed him to come to America. He immigrated and then became a United States citizen. At the time, Poon Lim was given credit for surviving the longest at sea on a raft, 133 days. He said, I hope no one will ever have to break that record. Poon Lim died in Brooklyn, New York, January 4th, 1991, at the age of 72. And that is Poon Lim's amazing survival story. Unfortunately, there was 52 other men on board that ship. And Poon Lim is the only one who survived. And we know that there was other men in the water. Poon Lim saw five other men on that other raft. I hope you all enjoyed this video as much as you could. A sad one? but at least it had a happy ending for at least one man that was on board the torpedoed ship. Thanks again. I hope you enjoy, people, and we'll see you on the next. Peace!